Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here. And we have the football gods down here for all of you guys to see because, well, we are honoring Drew Pearson. Drew Pearson part of the all-decade Dallas Cowboy team, one of the most iconic plays in NFL history, the Hail Mary to Drew Pearson. It is a travesty of justice that Drew Pearson is not in the Hall of Fame. He led the NFL in reception yardage in 2017, three-time All-Pro, and he's got to get in the Hall of Fame. And I'm going to keep pounding that and pounding that all off season into the season and everything else that I'm hoping that all my brothers in arms out there from the Cowboy fan 1980 to the Vashes, the Law, the E2 Blues, that uh, my Cowboys family, every single one of us continue to put it out there because he was one of the all-time greats. Speaking of all-time greats, now, our Dallas Cowboys have not lived up to the standards that these guys set. I have hope that we can get there. I'm happy that the black ages of the Dallas Cowboys that I'm going to look at with Jason Garrett are now over. That the Dallas Cowboys have decided that they're going to erase all memory of Jason Garrett and start anew with all new coaching pretty much with the exception of two guys, Nussmeyer and Kellen Moore. I'm good with that. It's time for change, and sometimes you can't just go ahead and just say, we're going to take a little piece here and a little piece there. That's what the Cowboys have done for years. It hasn't worked. They've decided we needed to <laughs> cut it all out and start over, and I'm happy with that. And so now that the staff is just about all together, now becomes the real work, and there is a lot of work to be done between now and March 18th because that's when you know some teams may be pretty close to the cap. They're going to go through and try and do some things to get some more money. You already saw that Matt Ryan restructured his deal, took some more cash out now to give them some cap relief because they're tight against the salary cap. We, on the other hand, currently have about $87 million before the cap goes up about 10 to $12 million. Before we make any moves on guys like Tyrone Crawford who say, you know, he wants to restructure his deal to give the Cowboys some break. Well, uh, restructure is different from redoing. Restructuring is, I'm giving you more money right now for relief on the cap right now, but we're kicking your contract down the road. And when you start looking at guys that are older, you don't want to do that. We used to do that on a regular. Now we're holding 26 free agents, and we have to decide between March 18th which of these guys we want to sign before they have an opportunity to sign elsewhere for big money. And the two big ones, of course, are Amari Cooper and Dak Prescott. To me... It's a no-brainer with Dak Prescott. A lot of you out there will say, well, franchise tag him, you know, and then that way make it prove another year. Well, let me go through real quick. Well, you know what? Let's go through. I want to listen to Pro Football Focus. This was from before the season last year when we were talking about Dak Prescott. So let's listen to them for a few minutes, and then we'll come back to compensation. Yeah, big money. So we're talking about Dak Prescott being a $30 million a year quarterback. And again, this is completely in a vacuum. I do think when you're talking quarterback contracts, the idea of front-loading them, I think can make a lot of sense depending on the situation so, or a Derek Carr situation where he made a ton of money from the Raiders, but the Raiders have some pretty good outs there. If they need to move on, I think, I think Dak has to be in that boat. This is a perfect opportunity to pitch your appeal for the NFL to create a middle class of quarterbacks. Yes, yeah, so we'll throw it out there. So we did a whole new idea. Well, it's, well, it's impossible middle to do because it, it essentially would take collusion. <laughs> um, and we know that the NFL owners are well above colluding. Of course. So we did a whole video on it a few weeks back because Eric and George did a breakdown and, and you know Chris has been coming in here in the office and he's like, I need answers here. Like, who do you pay? Who do you not pay? What's going on? We essentially came to the conclusion when you have a top 8 to 10 quarterback, it truly is a game changer. It, it's, a, it's, it's not a generic cutoff, but when you have guys in that top 10 range, when it, whether it's Brady, Breeze, Rodgers, um, Mahomes now, 
Rivers is probably in that boat. Big Ben, Matt Ryan. I like the Matt Ryan rule. The somebody Ryan stole rule. this from somebody. If your guys, if your quarterback's worse than Matt Ryan, you can keep looking. Okay. If you have Matt Ryan or better, you can you can win. Do you think we're all more consistently? Do you think we're all agreed that Dak Prescott is worse than Matt Ryan? I'm a, I'm in complete. I am. Yes. Do you think? Well, I don't think everybody's in agreement. Worldwide, landscape-wise, we're all agreed on that? No, because... Because we probably should. Because I've seen people cite stuff like, since 2016, best quarterback record in the NFL, Tom Brady, of course, quarterback and then Dak. I'm just, I'm just giving you the arguments. Dak Prescott's number two, I believe. Right, but if the argument yeah. is wins, go away. If the argument is wins, I mean, over time, it's going to even off, but in a three-year sample, of course not. So Dak, he wins, right? There's the running component that he brings to the table. I do think that is valuable, right? You can use it in the red zone. There, there's something to that. I saying, think Dak is, he's at best the 15th best quarterback in the NFL. He's in that 15 yeah. to 22 you range. Might, saying, there's a level of that. people that you can't talk to, right? Yeah, I know. So if the, if the argument coming back at you is QB wins, we can't have a conversation. Right. So, so there's this, this cutoff at the top 8 to 10. I think Baker's in that mix now. Yeah. Mahomes is in that mix now. It's more crowded. It's more crowded, but so we'll say it's... So wait, wait, wait. Let, let, let's make sure we got this right now because their cutoff is Matty Ice. And they have Baker Mayfield in that. Baker Mayfield. They have Phillip Rivers in that one, too. So th- those two guys. Big Ben, who is was injured all last year. But but go. let's go on. Let's go on. It's top 10. If you have a top 10 quarterback, you build around him. Once you're at 11 through 25... There's a certain level of interchangeable with those guys. They have different skill sets. Uh, they're not the exact same player, but you're talking about Matthew Stafford. I think you're talking about Cam Newton. There was a lot of talk about Cam Newton over the weekend, about his Hall of Fame credentials and all what? these different things. Hall of Fame? Well, because when you stack up counting stats, like passing yards and rushing touchdowns and different things like that, his rushing, his rushing ability is extremely valuable. But using our grades... He's really had one year where he's been elite, you're close to it, that MVP season. Maybe one other year where I think he cracked the top 10 in our grades and has mostly been in the 15 to 20 range. Okay, that's enough of this. So so basically, going into the season, they were saying that Dak maybe. well, we, we heard, but they said he was a Tier 3 quarterback. Now, I don't care how much you hate Dak Prescott. He is beyond being a Tier 3 quarterback. But here's the thing that they have on here. Okay, so... Hypothetically, they're saying that Matt Ryan is your cutoff point. If you're worse than Matt Ryan, then you need to keep looking. Now, I will take Dak Prescott over Matt Ryan anytime. Anytime. I've never seen Dak Prescott and the team collapse like I did Matty Ice in the Super Bowl. And that team, if your whole thing is, well, you know, Dak Prescott, you know, he didn't make it to playoffs. Well, Matty Ice hasn't been in the playoffs in several years either. And that's with having Julio Jones and Muhammad Sanu and, um, well, Muhammad Sanu got traded. But regardless, but let's just look real quick at the numbers. You've got Russell Wilson at 35, Big Ben at 34, Aaron Rodgers at 33 and a half, Jared Goff right there with him at 33 and a half, Carson Wentz at 32, and then Matty Ice at 30, Kirk Cousins at 28, Jacoby Brissett at 27.9, Jimmy Garoppolo at 27.5, Matthew Stafford at 27, and Derek Carr at 27. Now, the interesting thing is, is when we went into uh, the offseason last year, Aaron Rodgers had become the highest paid, um, taking over for Matt Ryan, who was paid higher than Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins had taken over for the highest paid, being Jimmy Garoppolo, who had taken over for Matthew Stafford and Derek Carr. And a lot of people say, you can't make Dak Prescott the highest paid, you know, because he's not the top five. He's not the best quarterback. It's not about being the top quarterback. You can't say that Matt Ryan was the best quarterback in football. You, I guess you could argue that with the, the Super Bowl season he had where he was MVP, but since that, not really. In fact, if you take his body of work, he's had some years where his playoffs were Tony Romo-esque. You can't say Kirk Cousins in any stretch of the imagination was ever the best quarterback in football, yet he was the highest paid. And when you look at his contract now being $7 million less than Russell Wilson, you look at it as a bargain because you're looking at the money in today's numbers. You're not looking at it and what it's going to be like two or three years from now. In the same way, 
when Tyron Smith's contract was signed, which was $97 million, they said the Dallas Cowboys were crazy to sign an offensive lineman to a contract that big. Nobody's ever paid an offensive lineman that big. Well, right now, his number is like 13th in the NFL, and it looks like a bargain for what it is right now. So you got to at least say at this point, because we need to get this thing done, if you go ahead and franchise tag him, the franchise tag number was 26, I believe, last year. Um, it's going to end up going up um, close to 30, probably. And if Deshaun Watson and Pat Mahomes get their deal done, which you're looking at Pat Mahomes being probably 40, then all of a sudden that number is going to jump up even more. But let's say, hypothetically, it's, it's 30, just for the sake of numbers. That means you're paying a $30 million guarantee next year. On the cap, that's a hard number. Give you an example, Russell Wilson's getting compensated 35. His cap number is only 25. If you don't get a long-term deal done, which now you start trying to do that long-term deal, when Pat Mahomes takes it to 40 and Deshaun Watson's like 37 and a half, you know, Dak Prescott isn't going to say, I'll take 30. His number is going to increase more. In the same way I said this time last year, get Dak's deal done before Russell Wilson, because had they done this last year, this would be a mute point. You probably would have had him for 29. But the longer you wait, the more it costs you, it behooves you to get it done. And if we go back, and I know some people say he's just not the guy. He's just not the guy. You you won't believe what your eyes will tell you. But when we look at Dak Prescott's numbers, his statistics, he's always been 60, mid-60s in completion percentage. His touchdown percentage, 5%. It's gone back up to where it was when he was a rookie. His touchdowns, he's got seven more passing touchdowns this year than he did any other season. His interceptions went up slightly from last year, but he's throwing the ball down the field further. His yard per average is one of the tops in the NFL. And yards per catch, 12.6. So you're not looking at a guy who is like turning the ball over and fumbling like Jameis Winston. 30 interceptions, or excuse me, fumbling the ball like Carson Wentz is. You're talking about a guy who pretty much takes care of the ball, whose numbers continue to rise year after year. And that's under Jason Garrett. What do you think is going to happen with a Mike McCarthy who's worked with Joe Montana, who's worked with Aaron Rodgers, as well as Brett Favre? You're looking at a guy who has coached three Hall of Fame quarterbacks. I'm assuming that Aaron Rodgers will be there. that, That may be premature. But think about that for a minute, what he's going to be able to take to take with that guy, a guy who stays healthy, a guy who is never a problem on or off the field, that the team stands behind. You need to get it done. If you don't, it's going to continue to cost you the longer you wait. You better get it done before Deshaun Watson and Pat Mahomes, or else it's going to cost you another 3 or $4 million a year. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, i got a lot of work to do. Um, Starting Wednesday, next week, we will be in Miami. Um, We'll be showing you the Super Bowl city being put together and everything else. We'll be probably trolling some of the shows from uh, Undisputed and things like that um, there. And uh, definitely like and subscribe. If you're in the Miami area, you're going to be at the Super Bowl. We're going to try and do some meetups and things where we're going to be doing a lot of live streams and stuff and giving you as much of the action as possible uh, in between doing the work i got to do down there. So uh, hold on tight. we got... 16 days until the Super Bowl. And in the meantime, we got a whole lot of work to do. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I'll see you soon.